Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today's tutorial, well, today is actually gonna be two tutor tutorials. This is part one, which we are going to work the blanket and the matching pillow, and then part two is gonna be the little hat and the uh, matching cardigan. So, check out the description box for that part two, um, the link for it. Anywho, so, let's talk about what this is. This is a corner-to-corner -corner rectangle granny stitch blanket. I don't want to say granny square blanket because it's not square, it's rectangle. <laughs> um, <clears throat> super easy, and this is another project that I wanted to use the granny stitch on to you to uh, get through my yarn stash because I had so many skeins of this Red Heart uh, Super Saver Retro Stripe. I had so many of these and I wanted to get through them so I thought Granny Stitch is the fastest way to get through a project so I could get it to on a tutorial and get it out quick to you guys. So this is another one of my Granny Stitch series. Um, it is super quick and easy. Uh, I'm going to walk you guys completely through it. There are a few things I want to talk about before we do get started, so please stick with me. Don't fast, don't skip to the tutorial and then email me a question, which the answer's in the this part. I, I find that really funny when people do that. <laughs> anyway, sorry, I'm just written. Okay, first thing I want to talk about is the pattern for the blanket and the pillow is exactly the same. Exactly the same pattern. The only difference is the width that we work. This blanket is 42 inches by 52 inches. You do not have to work that length, right? The only reason I did that, length or width, the only reason I did that is like I said, because I had so many skeins to get through. Um, to I had so many skeins to use up, so that's why I decided, you know what, I'm just gonna make this a 42 by 52. You do not have to make it that big. You can make this however big you want to, okay? I give you the directions in the video. And like I said, the pillow is the exact same pattern. The And um, like I said, the only difference is the width. So when you work this pattern, what you do is you start in a corner, right? Just like a corner to corner. We start here and we work this corner to corner to corner till we get to the width we want. So for instance, the pillow, I knew the width I want because I only was gonna go as wide as the pillow. And so that is that portion I call the increase portion of the pattern, right? So we're increasing the width. And then once you get to the width you want, like I said, the width of the pillow, then we're going to extend the stitches. So we're, you know what, let me, let me show you on this pillow. So we get to the width, well, that's backwards. <laughs> we get to the width we want, and then we're going to extend and work it to the height we want. So for the blanket, it was 42 for the width, 52 for the height. So 42 for the width. And then to extend, we just work the extend portion of the pattern until we get to the 52 that I wanted for my blanket. And for this, I just needed it for the height of my pillow. And then um, we work the decrease side. So we get to our width, we get to our height, and then we're just going to close up the rectangle. So, and the reason I'm saying that is because, I like this better, is because in the video, I'm making the pillow cover, the, um, cause for the pillow, we make two panels and then just stitch them together. So I'm not making the blanket. I had already made my blanket. So in the tutorial, what I'm doing is making the pillow cover. So, um, I'm just showing you that's, you know, it's the exact same thing. It's just, you just work to different, to different, um, width and length. Okay. So for your pillow, I'm going to put in the description box, a link for the pillow I have right here, which I got from Amazon, a rectangle pillow. And wow, those are some nice pillows. After I opened them, I don't remember how I may have paid like $15 for four pillows, I think, or three or anyway. Um, man, they are nice pillows. I really like those. I, I think I'm going to make a couple for myself because I love these pillows are nice. They're, I don't think they're like feather stuffed or anything like that. I think it's just regular filling, but they're nice pillows. Anywho, I'll put a description, a link in the description box for the, uh, the pillow I used and I used a, 
six millimeter crochet hook, which I think I accidentally put up. Get it out. Here it is. I used my six millimeter crochet hook. Okay. And I have, why is it? I, oh, here it is. You're going to need a pair of scissors, a needle to weave in your ends, and um, I use six millimeter on the blanket and the pillow, and I want to tell you guys, when I made this, like I said, it's 42 by 52, I used six skeins of Red Heart Super Saver Retro Stripe, um, how many yards are in this? 236 yards times six. I 100% recommend you get six that have the same dye lot because I have this laid out just perfect. You can see this. So look right, doo -doo -doo, right here. See this yellow right there? See how pastel and pretty and soft that is? Now look right there. See how, what's the word I want to say? It's, it's, uh, not dull and it's not bright. It's more of like a bleh yellow. Does that make sense right here? And you can see it again right there. That is because the dye lots did not match on my skeins. And I was highly aggravated that the, the first part is such a beautiful pit, not pale, but like a pastel soft colors. And then it went to these bright, I don't know what the word I want to say to describe it is. Anyhow, what I'm saying is make sure you get six skeins that have the same dye lot. See how that's pastel? Well, that is not pastel right here. <laughs> All right. And the same thing with the pillow. I used um, two skeins on the pillow, six skeins on the blanket. So make sure you have the same. Now the blanket and the pillow don't have to be the same dye lot. I mean, it's all right if it doesn't exactly match. It's not that big of a deal, but I mean, check your dye lots. Okay, so that is all you are going to need. Let me check my notes to make sure I have nothing else that I need to tell you. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. All right, that is it. So get your supplies together and let's get started. Okay, so to get started, we're gonna get a slip knot on our hook and make sure you have plenty of tail to weave in later. And we're gonna start with a chain of four. One, two, three, four. Come down to that first chain and we're gonna slip stitch into there to form a ring. And I'm gonna go ahead and pull that tail, tighten down that chain, and then I'm gonna wiggle my fingers in there so I can keep a, keep a hold of that hole. And we are going to chain four. One, two, three, four. Now this chain four throughout the entire blanket, the pillow, the pillow cover is, um, counts as a double and a chain one. So the chain three is the double and then the fourth chain is the chain one, okay? All right, now back into the ring, we're gonna work three double crochet. One, two, three. Chain one and then double crochet right back into the ring. So basically, what we have is a the chain four, but that counts as a double chain one, three double chain one, double. Alrighty, now we're going to go on to row two. So we're going to chain four, one, two, three, four and turn and then into the very first chain one space we're going to work three double crochet one two three chain one come to your next chain one space 
which is actually just the space between the chain four and that last double. And we're going to work three double crochet. One, two, three, chain one. And now what we're going to do is we are going to find the fourth chain. Or I'm sorry, the third chain. So if you turn your chain sideways, you can see the back humps, right? You can see one, two, three. See that third back hump of our chain? I'm going to go through my chain to where I catch. Um, what I'm working around is the back hump and the side hump. So I actually have two loop, two strands of that chain. And we are going to work a double crochet. All right, now we're going to chain four. One, two, three, four. And if you want to, you can use a stitch marker to mark that uh, third chain so you always know where you need to work into. And I have my windows open. It's like 70 some degrees outside today. It's absolutely beautiful. And the birds are going crazy outside my window. So I'm going to pause my video and I'm going to shut my window so the birds aren't bothering you guys. I'll be right back. Okay, so that should be a little bit better. All right, so we chain four. We just finished round, or I'm sorry, row two. So we're gonna chain four and turn. And row three, we're gonna work three double crochet into that very first chain one space. One, two, three, chain one. Jump to that next chain one space. One, two, three, chain one. And remember this chain four is a double crochet and a chain one. So we have a chain one space right here and we're gonna work our last three double crochet. All right, now we're gonna chain one, find our third chain up. So I can see one, two, three, and we're going to double crochet into that third chain up. All right. So you can see how it's coming out. We have one granny square, two granny square, three granny square. Okay. So the next row is row four, and that is what we're going to repeat until we get the width of the blanket that we want. So what we're going to do is chain four, turn, three double crochet into that very first chain one space. One, two, three, chain one into the next chain one space. One, two, three, chain one, jump to that next chain one space. Oops. One, two, three, chain one. And don't forget that chain four counts as a double and a chain one. So we have one last chain one space to work our three doubles into. Two, three, chain one and find your third chain up one two three and double crochet into the third chain up all right so that was row four and that is what we are going to repeat over and over and over again until you get to the width that you want for your baby blanket so for mine was the uh, i worked it and i worked re row four until my baby blanket measured 42 inches across. So what we're gonna have is a shape that looks like this and you're gonna get a little confused on where your corner is. So always leave this beginning tail. This is the first corner of your rectangle, all right? So whenever you measure, let's say, you know, you've worked row four 15 more times and you're like, well, I wonder how long it is. So what you'll do, set your piece down so you have that first tail and that's where you're going to measure. So right now, mine is at three and a half inches. 
Well, I want to go a lot longer, so or a lot wider for my baby blanket. So what do I do? Just repeat row four. Chain four. Turn into that first chain one space. Three double crochet. Chain one. Next chain one space. Three double crochet. And chain one. Three double into the next chain one space. Chain one. Three double into the next chain one space. Chain one. And you repeat that across your row until the very last chain one space, which is actually the chain four, but that counts as a double in a chain one. So into that last chain one space, three double. Chain one. Turn your chain a little bit until you see one, two, three back humps. And into that third one, work your double. All right. So that's row four again, and we're just going to repeat and repeat until you get to the width you want. So I, and since I already have my big piece done, I'm actually going to make my second, uh, my second pillow panel. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is repeat row four until I get to the width I want. So if you are making the, um, the pillow, you're actually going to follow this same pattern that I'm doing right here. All right, so I'm gonna work row four over and over and over again until I get to the width I want and I'll be right back. Alrighty, so I have repeated row four over and over and over again until I got to the width that I want. Now, keep in mind, this is for my pillow, but for your blanket, you could you know, do any width you want to. And now what I'm gonna do is get a stitch marker and we are going to mark not the side that we ended on, the opposite side. We're gonna mark that because what we're gonna do now, so here's my first panel that I can show you guys. So we've gotten to the width, right? Oh, excuse me, I just ate a salad. Ugh. But what we're gonna do now is increase on one side and, and not increase on one side. So what we're gonna do is bring this corner with us up as we get to the height that we need. So for instance, I feel like that was probably a little hard to see. So we got the width that we want, right? But now what we need to get is to the height. So this side, this the side that we, um, are, we just finished, not the one that we marked, that's the side that we need to grow to the height of the blanket that we want, right? But this side needs to come with us. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna work into this, but just bring it up and not increase it or it'll keep going out, out, out. We don't want that. So we're just gonna bring it up with us and increase on this side. So what this is gonna do is turn it into from a square to a rectangle. I'm trying to get both my fingers on camera. So it's gonna go like this to the height and then we're gonna decrease. All right, okay, so like I said, for my blanket, I went 42 inches wide and then 52 inches long. So this is a good example of what, like pretend this is the baby blanket. So we got to our width and now we're just gonna carry everything up till we get to the height. So the end that we have marked with the stitch marker, what we're gonna do is we're gonna just, we're gonna work the row similar to row four besides how we end on the stitch marker end. And that's why we're gonna have this so we can always remember this is where it's changing. So these are the decrease rounds, or not decrease rounds, the extending rounds, extending the height of our work. So we're gonna do the same thing as row four, one, two, three, four, chain four and turn. Four double crochet into the first chain one, chain one, three, did I say four? I'm sorry, three double crochet into the chain one, chain one, and repeat that across all the way until you get to this 
uh, chain one space, which is, remember this is a chain four, but it counts as a double crochet chain one. <laughs> so once you get to the stitch marker, I'll say that, stop. So I'm going to come back when I work my three double crochet right before the stitch marker, okay? I will be right back. Okay, so I worked the three double crochet, chain one, all the way to my stitch marker. And now what I'm going to do is chain one, and then into that space, we're going to work one double crochet. Okay, chain four. Turn our work. And then you're going to skip that first chain one space and go right into the next one with three double crochet. Oops. One, two, three. Chain one, three double into the next chain one. So if you look, so here's our first corner and we worked till we got to the width we want. And now you can see it's gonna start working up like this. Okay, so you go ahead and continue across with your three double chain one, three double chain one, all the way, and then you work the ed, the ed, the end. Sorry, <laughs> about drop my hook. The uh, the corner that we are extending up, you work that just like you normally would with the um, that row four. Three double crochet into the ch the chain one space, chain one, double into the third chain up, chain four, turn come back down well let's bring up our stitch marker around that chain four okay and then you're gonna you know you're working your three double chain one three double back down so when you see your stitch marker you work your last three double crochet chain one double crochet into the space that's got your stitch marker chain four turn skip that first chain one space three double chain one into the next chain one space and work it back up I'm gonna go ahead and work it with you guys it's just I kind of wanted to give you a, a little idea of what we were gonna do so I'm gonna go ahead and finish all the way up this row and when I get to this last chain one space I will uh, come back so I'll be right back okay so I've made it back up to this corner so I did my three doubles and I chained one already okay so into the next space I'm going to work the three double chain one find my third hump one two three so into the third chain with a double crochet chain four and turn into the very first chain one space with three double chain one three double into the next chain one space chain one and repeat that all the way to this end and I'll meet you there all right so I have come back down to my stitch marker so I worked my three double, chain one, and I'm gonna double crochet into that chain space. Just work one double, chain four, and turn. Don't work into that first chain space, go right to that next one with your three double, chain one. And then you just continue with your three double, chain one, into each chain one space. But I am going to stop and bring up my stitch marker to that last chain four that we did. Go right around there. Okay, and you can see how it's carrying up this time. So it'll go like that. Okay, so I am going to repeat this, my, um, my uh, extending rows until I get to the height that I want. So if you're making the baby blanket, you go to as high as you wanna go. So my baby blanket, I went from 42 width to 52 height. So go, so this is the side that's extending. So when you measure, 
this is the side that you're going to measure, not the, not the side with the stitch marker. You're going to measure the side without it, all right? So keep going until you get to your height. And if you're making the pillow, just keep going until you get to the, uh, the height of your pillow. So like for the rectangle pillow, I already have one panel done. And all I did is just laid this panel on, well, all I did was work it until it cut, went from corner to corner on my pillow. So I, I already know how big I need to go with this panel, but okay. So if you are, you know, making the pillow cover, all you're doing is just going from corner of the pillow. You already did your width and you're going to go from the corner to the height. All right. So get your piece to the height. And then we are going to work the decrease rows, okay? So I will be right back. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys what I have here. I have worked my extending row and I repeated that until I got to the height that I wanted. So what I did was I just kept working. I'd work this uh, granny stitch, the shell right here, come down a little bit, stop, and then I'd measure. You know, it, do I got the height yet? Nope. So then what I would do is keep going, come down, work this, move my stitch marker up, come back up, work the last one, come around, start, and then I'd stop about right here and I measure, do I get to the right height? And this time I do. So now I'm going to show you what we're going to do once you get your height. So I am going to go ahead and come back down to finish this row. chain one. Okay, so I'm going to come into this chain one space. Well, chain four. And then chain four and turn. Skip this first chain one space into the next. Work my three. Double crochet. Chain one the next chain one space and I'm going to repeat this up to the, my corner, my new corner. All right, so I will come back once I get up here. Okay, so I've made it back to this corner and I've worked my three double chain one. And now what we're going to do is work one double crochet into that chain four and then chain four, one, two, three, four, and turn, skip the first chain one space into the next with our three double and chain one. So you can see it already made that turn. So when I lay my piece out, you can see now what basically what we're doing now is the decrease. So we have our width, we worked up to our height, and now we're going to decrease to come to bring it together to create the last corner. So now's the easy part, that we don't have to keep track of our stitch anymore, our stitch marker anymore. All we're doing is the exact same thing on each side. Double crocheting into the last chain space, chain four, skip that very first chain space, go into the next with three double chain one, three double. So we're decreasing by one on each side. And eventually it's going to get real quick and it's going to, the last few rounds are going to be uh, work up really quick. So... Okay, I am going to work my piece until I'm, oh, until I'm about two or three granny stitches to the, from the end, okay? So I will be right back. Okay, so I have been repeating the decrease, which, I mean, double crochet, chain four, work across, double into the last, chain four, turn. I've been repeating that, and now I have two more little 
chain one spaces to work into so I thought I would go ahead and come back and show you guys how to finish off chain one into the next chain one space with a three double chain one double around that chain four chain four one two three four and turn so now I'm down to one one two three chain one into that chain four I'm gonna work my double all right so once you work your double crochet around that chain four this is what we have so far we are going to chain one and turn and we're gonna double crochet right around that chain four double chain one and pull up a loop cut it and you are done okay so if you made the blanket you should have you know a nice rectangle shape if you are making the pillow cover go ahead and weave in your ends and make another pillow cover or another pillow panel I should say the exact same dimensions and dimensions as your first one okay so if you made the blanket go ahead and weave in all your ends and you are done and if you made the pillow make your second panel get all your ends weaved in and we will sew this together real quick so I'm gonna get all my ends weaved in and I'll be right back okay so I've gotten all these ends weaved in and to finish our pillow, I'm just going to line up my two pieces here. And you can sew them together however you want to. You can, you know, just needle and uh, needle in a strand of your yarn, sew it together. You can whip stitch together. I'm actually just going to slip stitch mine together um, just because I think it's going to be the quickest for me. So I got a slip knot on my hook. And I've lined up my piece, and I'd like to have it the same side of the um, the rectangle with the same side of the rectangle on both on this panel so like this is where each of my corners started I lined them up and I'm just gonna come up line up this last granny shell with this last granny shell and I'm just gonna go through the side loops of the chain on each side and slip stitch And I'm just going to evenly space out slip stitches down the chains. Now, I am not going to work around my chains. I'm going to go through each of the chains um, just because I don't want to distort the colors any more than, you know, what I've got going on with the color that I'm using to slip stitch. Uh, I'll show you in just a second what I'm talking about. Because once I get this slip stitched, we're going to start here. We're going to come to this first corner turn the corner come across the bottom turn the corner come up the side and then we're gonna flip it inside out so once we flip it inside out I don't want those the color of the yarn to change too much along the side if that makes any sense <laughs> okay anyway I am going to just continue slip stitching down the side evenly spacing them out through the double crochet and then I'm just going into the side strands of the chains all right so I will meet you when I get to that first corner all right I'll be right back Okay, so I am back and I have worked this down this side and I've come to the farthest corner, farthest edge that I can get to and I'm going to go right into the corner and I'm going to work two slip stitches and then rotate and then just keep going across the bottom. Again, I'm not going into the chain spaces. I'm actually just going into the sides. 
All right. Okay. So just repeat that across the bottom and I'll meet you at this corner. Okay, so I've come to that next corner and I'm holding it to where it's lined up. Right there, it's lined up nice and even. I have the last granny shell on this side and on this side. So the chain is what is gonna make my corner. So I'm going to, again, evenly space out slip stitches until I get to that, that very end. Some of these chains are not the easiest to work into. All right, so I'm gonna go into the farthest I can get on this, the farthest I can get on this, and slip stitch, and then I'm gonna go right back in there for another slip stitch. Rotate. And now, line everything back up, and I'm gonna continue to slip stitch up this side. All right, just like that. Ah, come on. I was gonna go down to a smaller hook when I work this, but I don't want my slip stitches to be s smaller. I would I would need to go up to a bigger size hook, and I don't want to do that. So we're just gonna. That's why I decided to stick with the six millimeter. All right, I'm gonna evenly space out single crochets up this side and I will meet you when we get to this corner, okay? I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm coming up to my next corner. I thought I'd just go ahead and come back. You see how one is just a tad bit, tad bit uh, smaller. Same chains left, just a, one is a little smaller. So I'm gonna bring in this pink one a little. Into the chain. I split that, but I'm okay with it. It ain't gonna hurt nothing. Okay, so I'm pretty nice and lined up now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make that double crochet and that chain one that we made to in, to uh, fasten off, I'm gonna make that the very most corner, meaning the farthest I can get. That's where I'm gonna make my corner. Mm. Through there. Through there, and then I'm going to go into the chain one, and then I'm going to go in there again for my second slip stitch, and then I'm going to chain one and pull up a real long loop because what I'm going to do now is flip the pillowcase inside out. <clears throat> okay, and then I'm going to insert my pillow and slip stitch that shut. Now I pulled, right? Or did, yeah, I pulled the, uh, the label off the pillow. If you, if you choose not to, just make sure you put the label inside of your pillow cover. But I'm going to get this on here. <laughs> Get 
get in there. Okay. <clears throat> get these corners nice and filled with the corners of the pillow. Okay. Yay, it looks good. All right. <clears throat> yeah, I feel like I got something in my throat. All right, so now I'm going to do this off camera, but I'm just going to keep spacing out single crochets. So, yes, it is, this first one's going to be a tad bit wonky because, you know, the work is on the inside of the pillow and we're bringing it to the outside. So, but that chain one helps us get out of there. I'm just going to keep going along. This is so hard to do on camera and hold this. All right, so I'm gonna slip stitch this shut and I will be right back. Okay, so, and I, oops. I'm coming to that corner, which you can see right here is where I started. I am just going to keep slip stitching along. I'm going to go all the way as far as I can. There. Chain one, pull up a loop, and cut. And there is the pillow. It's adorable. Making sure that the pillow is nice and filled on each corner. Okay. Let me set this up. You guys can see the pillow. <laughs> I think it's awesome. So, of course, I got to weave in my ends. But I hope you all enjoyed. You should have your blanket done. Following the same thing I showed you. Your pillow done. There. <laughs> okay, guys, that is it for this part. The next part, we are going to make the hat and the little cardigan. So, hit that thumbs up if you enjoyed. Uh, subscribe if you haven't. Leave me a leave me a comment. Let me know what you guys think. And in the description box are links to my Facebook, my Instagram, Twitter, all that fun stuff. If you make this, or you know, want to shout me out, or sh I want to see what you make, um, tag me in it hashtag me or post it on my Facebook. I am super excited to see this. So, okay. I will see you in part two for the hat and the cardigan. Okay. Bye guys.